guys and gals well welcome to another tarantula feeding video on the menu we have a whole bunch of different size roaches I have a few uh, super worms and I have some smaller uh, mealworms and I also have a couple crickets but they're just the size so anyways I just wanted to show you guys before we started uh, this is Sama Post Cambridge Eye Trinidad Chevron number what number is this number four sorry for the shakiness uh, I just came down here probably about an hour ago uh, I was feeding my reptiles and whatnot, and uh, this guy or girl, actually it's a female, uh, she was on her back, so she has flipped over since, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick shot of her, freshly molted, uh, in front of her there, she's actually laying on top of her molt, um, so I'm, I'm, I don't think she's, you know, munching on her, her molt, she's got a lot of water here, but uh, I just want to give you guys a quick look at her. And uh, this is great because I have a mature male, uh, Summer Falls Cambridge Eye, uh, Trinidad Chevron. And as you guys know, or most of you guys know, I did pair her with, uh, I believe it was number two, Summer Falls Cambridge Eye number two, or sorry, paired him with number two. And also uh, I did the one on, on video and then I did uh, another one about three or four days ago. And uh, I did see an insert for sure this time. Uh, so that's cool. And uh, this one should be big enough to breed, so uh, I'll give her, you know, a couple weeks to harden up and get some good feeding into her. And this is the perfect time to breed tarantulas after they molt. That way they don't end up molting and, uh, you know, losing the egg sac. And also some post camera giant number one. That's my largest female. She's in pre-molt right now, so this is kind of really cool. I got three females and one mature male. So hopefully we'll end up with some uh, egg sacs and hopefully some babies. And just a quick update on Samopoas, not Samopoas, sorry, uh, Fona Palmasimani number one, the one that dropped the egg sac. Uh, she ate it, guys, about uh, three or four days ago. Kind of sucks, but, uh, you know, that's, this happens sometimes. And sometimes, uh, you know, honestly, I didn't even think she was big enough to breed. So it's probably her first egg sac. Uh, you know, she did well with it. I've seen her, you know, moving it around uh, and whatnot, but uh, for about a week. And then she ended up uh, eating it. So anyways, guys, we'll get on to the, the feeding video. And uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so this is the lair to my P. Muticus, my king baboon. Um, she or he or she has finally made just a burrow with a hole. She, he or she always dug this out. And within, you know, I have to dig it out. And then within, you know, the same day. It would uh, cover up the hole so as you can see uh, him or her feet are down or feet are right there but she's made a nice hole uh, down the bottom there and hasn't closed it up she has he or she has made a bit of web here uh, I don't think she's going into pre-molt because uh, she molted about a month or so ago so I'm just going to drop this uh, super worm down there and we'll see what happens Like it's interested. And there goes the worm. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I will leave this in as an update because uh, I haven't uh, done a video on this uh, tarantula in a very long time because uh, she's always hidden. He or she so anyways i'm happy that it's left the burrow open i'm sure i'm pretty positive it's not in pre-molt like i said it molted about a month ago not even and i think it's only eaten actually once or so since then so anyways we'll leave that in as an update we'll move on to the next all right this is grandma stola rosea uh chilean rose red color form uh this one molted actually a couple weeks ago it was in pre-molt for quite some time uh, i have fed her once uh, him or her actually i think i sexed it as a female uh, I fed her once since uh, her molt, so we'll try her again. And I missed. Sorry, guys. Dig out another roach. There we go. Figured, uh, 
they would want to eat because they tend to be quite hungry after a molt. Even if you feed them a week uh, <clears throat> after they molt, they're, they like to uh, gorge pretty much if you let them. I don't know if she's sunk her fangs in yet. Looks like she may have it. I don't think so. I think she's just got her fangs on there. Anyways, guys, we'll leave her to it, and uh, we'll move on to the next. Okay, this is a Akenta Scuria Ginoclata, Bra Brazilian giant white knee. Uh, I'm going to drop a roach behind him or her. Actually, her. Oh, crazy feeders. Looks like he's going into pre-molt again. Go run. Some bolus is behind her. I got to pick up. But I didn't want to do that until I fed her. I didn't want to get her all skittish and uh, throw her off her feed. Love these teas. I only have the one, and uh, I really would like to get some more. No action after the fact with these guys today. Get it? There's a look at her abdomen. It's getting quite plump. Zoom in here. Usually uh, there's a battle with this one. But she's clearly got her uh, left fang in. On the right side you can see the juice oozing out of the roach. Anyways guys, we'll move on to the next. Okay, this is Brachy Palma Alviceps, Mexican Golden Red Rump. Uh, I'm pretty sure this thing is, doesn't need a feed, but you know what? It's small, and uh, if it's in pre molt, it won't eat. Uh, and if not, uh, I don't mind because it'll just push it into a molt. I'm going to drop a roach. Num nums. Yep. It was hungry. Like I said, its abdomen is quite large. You know, um, it could have went without a feed. But uh, you know what? I like to get these slings going, and the quicker they should they molt for me, the better. Great little feeder. There's uh, him or her big booty. Roach is putting up a good fight. Yeah, this will probably be its last meal. It'll uh, that'll push it into uh, a molt for sure. Anyways, guys, nice little battle here, but uh, we got a lot of teeth to feed. On to the next. All right, this is Laziadora parahibana. Uh, pink salmon, bird eater, I think is a common name. Uh, this is just an update, guys, because it just molted. Uh, it has put some size on. I can't believe this molt, how much size it's actually put on. Anyways, uh, the molt was near its height there. Uh, this hadn't molted, I think it was yesterday, the day before I was down. And here's the molt. It's actually still... A little bit moist so that means it's just molted probably within the last six hours or so so uh, we won't be feeding this one but uh, maybe i'll do an update on it and uh do a feeding uh, a little later later on like a week later <laughs> we like to leave the tease a good week especially once they get to this size you know they're juvies now but uh slings you're okay three days or so they'll harden up but as they start getting bigger you got to give them at least a week Anyways, guys, he or she's looking great, and we'll move on to the next. Okay, this is Samopos Cambridge number two, Trinidad Chevron. This is the female that I paired with my male twice. 
I'm just going to give her a small roach, guys, because I gave her one last week as well. That was nice and gentle. Yeah, I don't want to overfeed her um, because uh, I don't want her going into molt. While, uh, well, if she's gravid, then uh, the egg sac will be no good. Um, or we won't end up with an egg sac, an egg sac. So, I mean, she's well fed, as you can see. Um, I just want to give her a small roach there. So, that'll keep her happy. She's actually been pretty good to uh, my mature male. Uh, once they're done, she does sort of kind of go at them, but uh, she's not too, too aggressive, so. It's a gorgeous tea. Well, this genus, or this home of close camera guys, I just love them. Very underrated, I know I say it every time, but great teas. Anyways, guys, we'll leave her to her roach. We'll move on to the next. All right, this is Samopoas Arminia, Venezuelan Sun Tiger number one. Uh, this one has molted, I believe it was a couple weeks ago. It has uh, eaten since its last molt, or uh, its molt, sorry. So uh, we're going to try this one with a uh, super worm. These guys are very reclusive. Um, I mean, they eat, but uh, they take their time when it comes to eating. What happens is I come back a little bit later, and then they're eating. So, as you guys know, this is the same genus as uh, Samopolis cambridgei, which is totally opposite. They're uh, very uh, aggressive feeders. Especially just after a molt. I mean, if this was a Cambridge eye, it would have been all over that. But, they're all different in their own little way. And there he is there. Stunning T. Just backing away from it. He will get it, he or she. super warm anyways guys we'll leave this in as an update there's a really nice look at him or her and it's uh, stunning markings and we'll move on to the next this is Samopolis Polker Panama Blonde number two try him or her on a super warm Very nice. Very nice. I only had a few uh, super worms, <clears throat> so I kept it for the ones uh, that are kind of finicky eaters, meaning these guys in the Arminius. Uh, Summer Post Poker number one molted about two weeks ago, so we're going to try it next. And I'm finding these guys are out and about a lot more than what they used to be. I guess as they're getting a little bit bigger. This one's probably, uh, I don't know, four inches, I'd say. Three and a half, four inches. Uh, they're, they're getting a lot more bolder. They're not hiding as much. And they're starting to feed a little bit better. Even, even better than my Arminias, actually. Anyways, guys, we'll move on to the next. Alright, this is uh, Sama Pulse Pulcra, Panama Blonde number one. This is the one that molted probably about two weeks ago. It looks absolutely stunning with the black abdomen and then the blonde legs. I'm going to try this one on a super worm. I'll get it. I'm just going to drop it. Hopefully, 
gets it. Definitely interested. Doesn't want to focus. Oh, just as it was unfocused. He got it. He or she. One fang's in anyways. Stunning little tease. Well, not so little anymore. But uh, it might sink that other fang in. See the beautiful iridescent uh, feet on the underside. Anyways, guys, we'll leave this one to it and we'll move on to the next. Okay, this is my female Therophosa apophysis. She's a good five and a half, six inches. Um, pink foot goliath and a feeder of roach. Num nums. These ones never let you down as far as feeding as long as they're not in the cream mold. A little bit of moss in there, but that's okay. Uh, this one I rehoused, I think it was a couple weeks ago. And uh, I keep this moss dampened, and uh, she really seems to appreciate it because she's always on the moss. Um, you know, every tea is different. You know, I obviously moisten over here as well. She's got a water dish in there. Um, but you know, if, if you have a tea that, you know, the species like to be humid and you know you don't spray their uh, enclosure down too much or whatnot and you see them hanging around that water dish a lot uh, that's letting that's the tea letting you know that you know what I like it humid and uh, you know even some teas that uh, you know they like the humid humidity uh, but you know you keep half the enclosure you know sprayed down and the other half dry. If they tend to be on the dry side, that's fine. Then you know they don't really want to be on the dry or on the damp side. But uh, they will go to where they want. And uh, you know, I always in our old enclosure, I sprayed half of it down. But I generally just keep this moss moistened, and she uh, she just lays right on it. She loves it. So if you have teas that are hanging around the water dish a lot, and they're supposed to be humid, that's them letting you know that uh, they want to be. Uh, you know, kept a little bit moister or a higher humidity. Anyways, guys, this is pretty cool footage of her, but it's over two minutes on her. There was some fang action we can't leave yet. Let's see how close we can get to those fangs. Hopefully, she readjusts again. Just commenting to uh, someone on one of my other videos. I think it was to do with my assassin bugs. I sure hope I don't come back. I mean, I don't believe in coming back or reincarnation, but uh, I, uh, I wouldn't want to come back as a roach because uh, I'd probably end up in uh, some tarantulas or some arachnids' uh, fangs, or I'd be done. And you know, sometimes I actually feel a little bit sorry for these guys these bugs because you know that can't be fun okay, I know this is a long time on her but uh, that's a pretty cool shot all right guys we'll leave her to it and we'll move on to the next all right this is my enclosure to my huntsman spider uh, he or she is under there uh, it also molted uh, probably about a week ago I'm gonna drop a cricket in there and hopefully this thing doesn't come flying out oh. See, 
there, buddy. Crazy fast. Growing like a weed. Gonna get behind it here, guys. I just don't want to spook it. I don't even want to breathe near it. Almost looks like it's got purple in it. Bluey purple on its legs and its abdomen. Creepy looking thing. Anyways, guys, I can't leave lit off this thing too long. It's just like a teleporter. So we'll move on to the next. Okay, this is Poplotheria ornata, fringed ornamental number two. This is the ones I rehoused, I think it was a couple weeks ago. Um, actually, this one molted, I think it was a day or two after I rehoused it. So um, it has had a feed since, but we're going to try it again. Drop that roach. See what happens. Sorry, I don't want to really go through the side of the enclosure, guys, because uh, there goes the roach. Because I can't see anything. It's kind of cloudy. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave that in there for now, and uh, we'll move on to the next. Okay, down there is Poplotheria ornata, fringed ornamental number one. I'm gonna drop a roach. See what happens. Oh, got it. Oh, shit, he's coming out. <laughs> Sorry for the cussing, guys. He struck at it. And then he bolted up here. He came right on the rim. And he went back in. Man, these things get your heart going. He struck at it. But as I took the enclosure down, it kind of went a little uh, crazy, went round in circles. And way down there, he's got uh, everything dug out, as you can see, sort of, kind of. And uh, he went and hid down there, so I figured I'd just drop the roach up here. And uh, he just got defensive, and then he bolted. I thought he was coming out for sure. I apologize for the... Uh, language guys because I don't you know we all say it now and again but I don't like it on my channel because you never know if kids are watching but it was kind of funny anyways guys we'll move on to the next okay this is the enclosure to my heteroscoldra macalata my topo starburst number two I don't know if you guys can see the legs right there I'm just gonna drop this roach Uh, nope, he's backing up, he or she. Uh, we don't see these guys very often because they're very reclusive. But uh, this one's looking great. My other one's doing well as well, but it's in that display case and uh, I never see it. Uh, I just throw roaches back there for it. And uh, he ends up getting them when he gets them. So I'm hoping this one's going to want to go for it. But, uh, yeah, they're both doing great, and also my uh, Poclothera regalis molted probably about two or three weeks ago. It's getting a good size. It's also in that enclosure, and it's uh, just picked a corner, webbed it up, and it hangs out in there. So it's very hard for me to get footage of it. Anyways, guys, I'll just leave this in as an update because we don't see these guys very often. We'll move on to the next. Okay, in the hide there is my Pamphibedius McCullough, Purple Starburst. I'm going to try and sort of kind of tickle her out. Oh. Tickle her out with a roach. And there she goes. It's been very reclusive since this last molt. I've said it a thousand times before, but these can change from molt to molt. The personalities, they can be out and about and out in the open and then after they molt they can become very reclusive even skittish or even go more on the docile side but uh, she's doing great that roach isn't doing so great but she's doing great very hard to get in there Anyways, guys, we'll leave her to that roach. 
This is one of my summer post Cambridge Ice Slings. Very remote. I don't know which one it is. There he comes there. As you can see, he's growing nicely. Oh, look at all the fangs, buddy. Fangs, tongs. Got the tongs. Still got my tongs. There he goes. The little jack in the box. Doing very well. I have him in this little uh, acrylic cube. He's down there with his ropes. He's webbed up all around behind this wood. Another look at him there. Ah, great little tease. I've always said it. Love me some of Paul's Cambridge eyes. Anyways, guys, on to the next. This is Brecky Palma Vegans, Mexican Red Rope number two. Drop a roach just in front of her. I say her, but I'm not sure of the sex. I have two of these guys. And uh, I'm hoping for a uh, male and a female, or two females. As I'm going to try breed, or getting into the breeding. If I have them, I'm going to breed them. If not, I'll look for a male if I get females. Or if I end up with males, I will uh, look for someone that wants to do a breeding loan. If I only had one, I'd obviously want a female because they live much longer and they get bigger. these oh they're little now but they get they get quite large I believe these uh, are one of the largest brackies you know six plus inches anyways guys we'll move on to the next and this is Brecky Palma Vegans number one Mexican red rump should eat Right on a roach. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Climb the tongs. Sorry guys, I had to let that go. He was right up the tongs. I don't even know if he got his roach. Wow. That's why tongue feeding is not all that great sometimes. So... He came right up, guys. I mean, I generally don't drop my tongs, <laughs> but uh, I, I felt them crawling up, and uh, I should have just left the roach there, because these guys are crazy, especially at this size. They're crazy, crazy feeders. There's another roach for him. Yeah, I felt him uh, coming right up the tongs. I had to drop them. I'm lucky. It didn't, the tongues didn't land on him. And uh, a great example why when I do the poking, I do it with the poker. Because these guys, you know, they're so quick and when they're, it's a feeding response, they just go for it. You know, even after um, I fed my uh, Therophosa apophysis earlier on, uh, I sprayed down its uh, enclosure a little bit. A little bit more and uh, it came darting for just the water so uh, yeah generally uh, I like I said I don't use my tongs well I was trying to tongue feed him see if he turned and grab it but he just bolted right up the tongs freaked me out you know you expect that from a pokey or something you know but uh, these guys are crazy as well just crazy feeding response, and that's all that was. That wasn't him being aggressive. That was him saying, oh, I'm hungry, and uh, I'm, you know, coming at whatever uh, is in front of me. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave, well, I'm going to leave two of them. <laughs> I know there's two in there. This one just molted uh, a few weeks ago as well. So there's no danger in uh, him molting and uh, 
roaches bothering him. And I don't find the roaches bothering anything anyways. Looks like he's going to sink into one of that one. But uh, I'll let him settle. And I'm sure you know, he's got a mitt on it. Yeah, he's going to grab it. Once he gets uh, one of those. There he goes. There we go. Now I can get that other roach out because his, uh, his fangs are full. Yeah, that was fun. Crazy fast, man. I mean, we all know they're fast, but that thing just came up my dogs like crazy. I was watching, uh, I think it was a trench lady. She's, she has a channel. I think that's her name, but uh, I think it was her GBB. This is videos a couple years old or something, but it came right up her tongues. And it actually freaks the heck out of you, especially when you're recording. Because you're looking through your camera and you know what you know you can't see the T and what's going on in front of you for uh, for your, your your camera or your cell phone that's what you're looking at and it's even bigger because you're zooming in on it so your depth perception is not there but that had nothing to do with depth perception that was just a, a tarantula coming up my tongues too close to my hand so I dropped the tongues anyways guys we'll leave this one to it and we'll move on to the next Okay guys, this is uh, Brachy Palma Verdezzi's Mexican Rose Gray. Try it on a roach. Num nums. I just watched that uh, uh, Mexican uh, Red Rump. Albus, I'm going to say an Albuceps. Sorry guys, I hit the pause button by mistake. I just watched that uh, Brecky Bomb of Vegans over again and uh, I put the roach down actually and then the roach ran under him and I think he mistaken my tongs as the roach and uh, as you guys probably seen if you watch it over again the, uh, the roach goes under him and he just you know continues on out like uh, my tongs was food and he just ran up them. Yeah, that was fun. Not really. I'm not saying that was fun, guys. That's not fun. That's not cool. <laughs> That's just, uh, you know, sometimes that happens, you know. And like I said, like, when I'm poking these roaches, once, uh, you know, they're in there or, uh, you know, the roaches are playing dead, I don't use my tongs. Generally, I don't use my tongs. Not that I was doing that, but, uh, like, they can mistake in that for food. And, and they just, you know, they want to... You know just feed so they're in this feeding frenzy it's a it's a reaction to food and that was just a prime example of uh they can climb you know slippery steel stainless steel tongs you know and they're not that thick they're not that wide but they have eight legs with uh <clears throat> little hooks on them and they can hook into just about anything if they want to so uh yeah that's why i use my poker and you know what guys i see a lot of people using their tongs I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do, but that's just a prime example. Why do you use, you know, use a little blade of grass or straw or something that they can't actually get onto and, uh, you know, travel up it. I mean, they can grab it and, you know, bite it or even get a mitt on it or two, but they can't climb them. Uh, but your tongs or, you know, forceps, whatever you're feeding with, uh, the tarantulas can crawl up them. And that was, uh, you know, prime example. So, anyways, guys. He or she got its grub, not grub, but meaning food, being a roach. So we'll move on to the next. Okay, guys, this is the enclosure, or this is my Scolopender subspinides, my Vietnamese centipede. Guys, I know it looks quite dry. I'm about to spray them down, but it is moist, as you can see down on the bottom part. I don't want to spray it down until uh, I try feeding them. So let's try them on a roach. Looks like it's sleeping. Oh. And this thing just ate last week too. It's got the leaf in there too. I can get some leaf with the tongs. Sort of trying to move it. Yeah, he doesn't have it with his 
mandibles, but he's holding on to it with his feet so he can get it. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Still got it with his feet, or his legs. And there's Pete's head out here. So, I'm sure what he's doing, he or she. cleaning his mandibles. I'm sure he'll go back to it. Let's see what he's doing under there because it's like he's totally left that roach. He's going back to it. Almost like he was cleaning his mandibles. Maybe the, I can't see the roach doing any damage to it, but maybe he had a piece of substrate or something in it. Had to go and get it out. Because he clearly left it. Went over there and looked like it was cleaning. Now he's all over it again. Anyways guys, that's like three minutes on him. Kind of cool though. Fierce little eater. Anyways guys, I'm going to spray his enclosure down and let him enjoy his roach. On to the next. Hey guys, I'm going to drop this quickly. Because this thing's coming up close. This is uh, Michaelis Conserides, Haitian Brown Bird Eater number three. That is a big female. That's almost a mature roach. Probably one molt away. I'm saying she's good seven and a half inches. Um, I want to eat that, eh? Sorry, guys. Let's see. If she wants it from here. <laughs> yeah. I need to get these guys in bigger enclosures. Look at her. She's huge. Very tight quarters. Um, let me just give you guys a look here. That's what they're going into down there. I don't know how big they are. Well, here's the size. They're uh, 48 quarts or, or 45 liters. She's going into that. Also, my other Pecan Cerides, my large female. Anyways, guys, I don't want to poke around her because uh, she's already over the lid. She's stretched down there and the floor is right here. So I don't want her running out. And flopping onto the floor. So I'm going to leave her with those roaches and I will check her after. Once she's in a bigger enclosure, I'll feel more comfortable with, uh, you know, poking at those roaches, but that she's too close to the top and I don't want her to fall out. Anyways, guys, on to the next. Hey guys, I'm back with uh, Pecan Series number three, Haitian Brown. She came down as I was going to put the lid on it. And she's got a foot on her roach. So what I did, I grabbed my larger tongs and come in from the left. See what happens. Yeah, no, she should get mad. Sometimes she'll take it off my tongs fairly gently. Holy fangs. Anyway, 
Anyways, I'm just going to drop that, guys, and get my tongs out of there. Anyways, guys, there she is in all her glory. She's got a few roaches in there. And if uh, she doesn't get them in a few hours, I will get them out. She's hungry. She just got angry. It's a huge tea, guys. Anyways, guys, that's enough on her. Move on to the next. Hey, guys, this is uh, Grandma Stola Pordry. Uh, Chilean Rose. Drop a roach and see what happens. Oh, very nice. Makes me happy. These guys are, uh, sorry guys, I have my uh, charger on my phone. My cord was in the way there. Uh, these guys are really funny when it comes to feeding. I don't think this one's fed in a while. Oh, well, not on camera anyways. I'll offer them food, they look interested, and then I'll leave it in, and then they end up uh, getting it a little bit later. That's nice to see it finally take something on camera. Not very often that happens. Anyways, guys, we'll move on to the next. All right, guys, I don't know how this is going to work, but this is the enclosure to my Vicularia Versicolor. It also molted uh, probably about a week and a half ago. It has eaten since. We'll just try it on the cricket here. There we go. There you go. Very hard to get this because I mean, it's grown quite a bit. There's my finger, my thumb. See it there? This thing was just a little tiny thing when I first got it. It is going to need a rehouse soon. But uh, I'm trying to find something that I can do like this make the bottom and then. As a, use the top as a bottom and then flip it up so I don't wreck its webbing and what have you up here. But uh, see all sorts of stuff in the States and in the UK, but uh, here in Canada for some reason uh, there's little, <clears throat> I don't know what they are, they, you guys know what I'm talking about. They're the enclosures that are, they're not octagon like this, but they, they're square and you can flip them upside down and use that as the base and take it off and keep your tea in the top half. But uh, you can't find them here in Canada. So Amazon has them when I found them there, but they wanted like, you know, the containers weren't that expensive, but they wanted like 60 bucks to ship them. And to me, that just wasn't worth it. So I'll figure something out. This is actually a toothpick container. You know, that toothpicks come in and uh, I just turned it into a little enclosure for this guy or girl. So yeah, there he or she is. Doing well, you don't see it much because it's so small. But uh, glad we got some footage. Okay, guys, on to the next. All right, guys, this is Grandma Stola Portery number one, Chilean Rose. Going to uh, operate a roach. Roach is gone. Gone. Come on, get it. Come on. Nice of two. Grandma Stola. Porteries. Would eat. Sorry guys, I'm trying to concentrate here. This is what they do. They act interested and then they, they just want to snuggle. For a week. Anyways, guys, we'll leave that as a update. On to the next. All right, guys, this is my H. Polkopies <clears throat> sling number two, uh, golden blue leg baboon. They're both doing really well. This one molted probably a couple weeks ago. The other one uh, is in pre molt. Um, I haven't rehoused them yet because they were molting and what have you are in pre molt. So I'm gonna. 
probably do this one within the next week or so and then the other one after it molts. Anyways, I'm going to try drop a cricket in here. See what happens. No, it just went underneath. Anyways, that's okay. He or she will get it. I'm not too concerned because the oh, I breathed on him. He just molded not long ago. And uh, I'll check on it in a couple hours once I'm done all this. But yeah, they're doing great. Just stunning little teas, as you can see. Um, I haven't done much with them as far as videos because they're too small, but they're starting to get a uh, size now where they're getting their adult colors, even though they're not adults. They actually look like a uh, poker peas now. So uh, I'll just leave this in as an update, guys, and I'm not going to show the second one because it is in pre mold Anyways, guys, on to the next. Okay, this is Sarge, my uh, Theraphosa Sturmy, Burgundy Goliath, if you want the roach. Oh, sorry guys, I'm trying to get the focus, and he's going to get Very hard to get in this little hide of his. Look at his brilliant colors. There's the ropes there. That's nice legs. Anyways, guys, we can't get much of him here, but he's doing great. And we'll move on to the next. Okay, this is Gramostola Pulcra. Brazilian black. She's been very skittish right now. I'm not sure if he or she's going to eat, but we'll try. Yeah, when I brought the enclosure down and uh, it was just going cray cray. I don't think it's in pre -mult. Sometimes they just get skittish and they don't want to eat. So I'll leave that in there for a little bit, guys, and uh, we'll move on to the next, but uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous tea. You know, I'm in Canada, and uh, these aren't easy to come by here. <clears throat> I'm not saying they're just a gram of stola, but for some reason they're uh, hard to come by, and they're somewhat pricey for a little tiny sling anyways. Anyways, guys, move on to the next. Hey, guys, right there. Right there is my tiny Nandu Chromatis sling. And over here I have a tiny, tiny cricket. Um, somehow, cricket or so got into my uh, iguana pen or cage. And uh, I guess it uh, laid eggs and I got a bunch of little babies in there. So I dug this one out. You can see how tiny it is to my thumb. So I'm going to try and feed this little guy. A live cricket. There's the cricket. And there's the cricket. I haven't fed these guys live yet. I usually just tear up a cricket. Nope. Anyways, I usually just tear up a cricket kill a small something and then they scavenge on it. Anyways I'll leave that in for a little bit and see what happens. It could be because of the lights on them but uh, I'm sure he'll take it. On to the next. Hey guys this is Chico my male veiled chameleon. I know he's not a tarantula but I'm gonna see if he wants warm. Buddy, what the heck? Come on, you know you want it. 
I usually give them roaches, but the guy I got them off of used to feed them super warm. Because roaches are hard to get here in Canada. I'm going to pause you guys. I'm going to try them off the tongs. All right, guys, I'm back on the tongs. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, we dropped it. Here we go. Num nums. Love this guy. Try him on another one, guys. Want that, Chico? Worm is just trying to bite the tongue so he's not moving. Sometimes it takes these guys a few minutes in between as well. Anyways, guys, I'll try him a little bit later. Uh, we have one more tarantula to feed. i just seen him sitting up here perched, basking under his UVB and UVA lighting. I figured uh, I'd give you guys a look at him and try to feed him. Anyways, guys, on to the next. Okay, guys, this is Nondu Colorado Velocis Brazilian Black and White. This is my female. She's probably a good six inches. <clears throat> I thought I had one more tea to feed, but actually I have two. So we'll do this one first, and then we'll go on to the last. Num nums. That was a great feeder. And all sorts of crazy webbing up here. On top of her water dish. Very, very hairy. I react very bad to these guys. So she used to kick a lot when, uh, I guess, a couple months ago. But uh, she settled down a lot. And she's um, molted the last couple of times. And she doesn't even kick anymore. She'll bolt and she'll run and hide down. Or hide here or here or burrow. But I haven't itched from her in a long time, which is really nice. Anyways, guys, we'll move on to the last trench, though. Okay, guys, last but certainly not least is my large Pamphibedius uh, female. She's about 8 inches. Unfortunately, she's under here. She's wanting to be under here. I'm not sure why. She's got this whole tank, and I even started a burrow there for her. So she's got something there, but anyways... Uh, She's just about here, but and she's facing this way, so I'm going to try this first. Try and lure her out. Now, I've been a little funny since she's been in this tank. Very reclusive. And she hasn't been feeding all that great for me. I'm thinking of uh, putting her in something a little bit smaller. I mean, she's fine. I mean, she's still huge. Abdomen's still really big. But she's not wanting to eat like she used to. Thought maybe she's going to pre molt. She did eat for me a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> well, one roach, a small roach. And that's probably fine for her. But Pamphos usually have voracious appetites and she's just not feeding like she used to, so anyways. Anyways guys, we tried. I don't and I don't want to move the yeah, you can't see there. 
I don't want to move her wood because she's kind of got it all cozy under there. And there's probably a lot of web under there and uh, it'll... I don't want to wreck her home per se, right? So, anyways guys, sorry she didn't feed. But, uh, you know, she's got a beautiful enclosure. Um, hopefully, you know, I can get her to start feeding a little bit better. Like I said, I may... Um, I may downsize her um, because she's not eating as well as I'd like her to be or as well as she used to. She was in this before and I've said it but I had a mold issue so I gutted it, cleaned it and I put her back in here and uh, she now doesn't seem to want to have anything to do with feeding. Anyways, just going to put that rope back. Anyways guys, I'll just give you a quick scan of the room again. There's all my Samopolis up there, my pokies, flat rock scorpions, uh, my other uh, Pamphibetes McCullough, more teas and all sorts of stuff over here. There's Binks, he hates me. Do labs always out. But he's looking great, healthy as a horse. My little uh, beardy, Galley. One that I got had metabolic bone disease. Chameleon, always on the go. I want to get him a mate. Hopefully, uh, try breed them. I bred them years ago, like 20 years ago. I used to breed these guys. That's a lot of fun. And I think that's all. There's other stuff. There's my crusty in there that she's hiding. There's my male, some of Post Cambridge Eye. My hooked out male. This is my big female summer post camera guy number one. H Mac is in here. Got it all webbed up nicely. Doing well, but I can't you can't see him much. Because uh the enclosure. And this is my P regalis, Pocotheria regalis. He or she's usually there it is right there. Up in the corner. So, very hard to feed. Uh, on camera anyways, you know. I can I go in through the corner here and just go above the leaves. And uh, usually if he's hungry, he or she, his legs will be hanging out and I'll offer him some food. But they're all doing well, guys. So I'm going to close that up. But, yeah, as I said, they're all doing well. I got my frogs down here, my Pac-Man, my Pixie. Uh, a bunch of slings here. You know, this is where most of my teas are here. Whole lot of teas. Uh, these are some slings. My Pocotheria Miranda. Apopalma Alba Striatum. Lampopalma Nigeriums. A few other things. OPTs. I got stuff everywhere. Anyways, guys. Enough of me rambling. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to be. I may end up splitting it up into two because I noticed I, uh, I spent a lot more time on them than usual. Usually, I'm only about a minute per and uh, this this one, I think some of them are even three minutes, some of them five minutes on the last part. So I may split it up, depending. I'll have to edit it and see what we end up with. But uh, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope everybody's having a great day, a great night, wherever you're at. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.